Blessings, champion. This is FBI Art from America with the radio broadcast from a champions. I release the fire, fire, fire of the Holy Spirit upon you today. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, but everybody stop and to start you out because everybody must know this. This is part of experiencing the uh, radio station instead of just listening to it. Experience the presence of God. Close your eyes and say this, Jesus, I'm precious to you. Wow. As the presence of God hits you, it should let you know the Spirit is here. It's not just like a radio broadcast. It is a, uh, probably when we bring the presence of God here. Say this, Holy Spirit, baptize and fill me. Open my mind up to your word, nothing else. And your fire, fire, fire today. Everybody take three deep breaths. <laughs> the goodness of God, that's the goodness of God, not just outside your body, up in the air, which God's all around. That's the goodness of God inside your body, bringing revelation and healing to your life today. And I believe this is what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit, we always invite the Holy Spirit in, in into all our radio broadcasts. Champions. <laughs> Hey, I love you guys, and today we're going to talk about something uh, because I was dealing with a, a friend of mine that, uh, you know, had some uh, marriage problems, something like this, and I noticed something in, in, in that relationship. This person was thinking, uh, if the thing doesn't get straightened out, it's not going to work out, and it's going to cause a divorce. And I noticed that right away is that they are opening up that door to the thought of the devil uh, that this thing might not work out. And once you start opening the door, the enemy always starts coming in and giving you more things. And, and when, you're, when you're going to a marriage, it's something you have in a covenant and you must only think you're going to make 100 years. <laughs> I've only been married 54, but you must not let that thought of divorce come in. And so I started thinking about it a little bit of my own life. And what happens is that when I, when I got married as a young man, of course I wasn't saved and I had no idea. But when I got saved at 30, I, had, I read the Bible. I was so excited about God and, and reading his word and, and doing miracles and all those great things. But that's not what, uh, uh, what, what changed my life. That's just not what changed my life. And that, this is something... Uh, I want you guys to think about deeply is that your idea is what God's going to do and what really happens sometimes doesn't uh, doesn't work out the way you want it and we get discouraged and we start judging God what do you mean by that yes I judge God because things did not work out I had a time level I said well seven years uh, things that my uh, things are going to work out the way, way I did. So uh, Promises that I thought God did not keep. I judged him. And, 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 and it almost caused me a divorce in my life. But, uh, but uh, this scripture will help you, and I believe understand this, how things are going to work out if you have faith. All things are possible, those who have faith, correct? And it's not impossible for the double-minded man. So you have, to, you have to be straight. And I'm going to sh show you this. And it has a lot to do with even communion. How, how important communion is and how it's going to strengthen you and make you finish the course. Now we're going to talk about the children of Israel. Now this incident happened when they were in the desert 38 years. They came to the land of Edom. And they were uh, 38 years. That's a long time. They're walking in the desert. They're being healed by the manna. The manna itself is healing them. And they're, uh, uh, they start out so good, and the manna's giving them life. And they're not dying. They're not doing us. But they, they're sick and tired of the manna. They're sick and tired. They're probably just worn out. The journey gets bad. They go to this place called Edom. And the people of Edom, the king of Edom, does not let them pass through. So they have to take a hard way around, a way far around in the desert. And they don't like it. And, and, and there was a rock of uh, a water, 
and Christ was the rock, and it followed them, and water would come up. But they wanted water just in lakes and pools, but they didn't have to wait on faith for God to give you water. And that's a lot of times we started uh, we start doing this. Well, we don't like this faith stuff. We want everything to be like this. I want a bottle. I want to go down to the Seven Eleven and buy a bottle of water, drink it when I want. Well, God in faith walks. It's a different story. You've got to wait on God for everything. I don't like that. Well, I don't like it either. But my flesh don't like it. I like it because my spirit man does. So here's what happened here. And, and this is, uh, uh, will t- uh, tell you a communion. And a lot of you guys are just tired of reading the word and you're tired of communion. You, we, we want everything just like the world. But I'm telling you, if you want the promise of God and get into the promised land, because a lot of these people uh, for, forgot this and they never got into the promised land. They were destroyed because they forgot this. And I've seen Christians all my life. I've been Christian now 47 years. And, and I, all the guys were on fire, started, and then they dropped off. All the guys on fire, they're, they give up the Holy Ghost. They were going to uh, uh, fired up churches. Now they're just going to church on Sunday and doing their deal and waiting to get to the promised land. Well, a lot of them may not even ever get there because they've given up on the promise. They stopped gazing at, 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 at the truth. They, stopped, they started looking at the world. Now, so this is what we're going to talk about today. Now, uh, this is in 1 Corinthians 10. Now, I'm going to put my eye speckles on, and we're going to read this. How about that, champions? Let's see. 1 Corinthians 10, 1. More error the brother, I should, I would you not be ignorant how all your fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Miracles, miracles. And they did all eat the same spiritual meat, and all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So Christ was uh, the water. He was coming in. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. So why were they overthrown in the wilderness? Let's take a look at that today. This is why we're looking at that we do not get overthrown in our wilderness of our life. Because this is the way of life. Oh, yeah, if you become a Christian, everything is just going to be rosy. You're going to have no problems, Art. That's all I ever heard. No, you're going to have problems because you're just like the rest of the world. We, he, he causes us to rain and shine, uh, 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 water to shine on the just and the unjust. But we just have the, vi- the assurance that we will win. All right? Does that make sense to you? So that, that's, let's get that clear. And because this did not work out well with them. Now these things were examples. To intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Now we're going to verse 9. Because this is the verse I want to get. And they neither let us tempt Christ as some of them were tempted and destroyed by the serpents. 23,000 people of them got uh, destroyed by the serpents. Now, let's take and read what happens in Numbers 21.4. After we read 1 Corinthians 10.12. Now let's look here, because these are examples to us. Let's read this. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the sea to compass the land of Edom, and the soul of the people were discouraged because of the way. Sometimes we get discouraged in, in a long journey. This is 38 years when this happened. You understand? They're almost promised the land. And, and, and they're getting some other stuff hitting them that they weren't expecting. Sunday punching. They thought things were right. But the devil is also trying to, and God is also putting us in the test. Remember, uh, uh, Abraham was tested. He was with the Lord from 75 to 100 years old. He had a son. But his son was either uh, 13 or 30 years old when he put him upon the the mountain to test him. And God said now, so we need to be 40 40 years walk with him. And God's already saying, now after Abraham put the knife up, said he he believing he would even if he killed his son, the guy would raise him up again. God says, "Now I know you believe." He said he tested Abraham, his faith. Your te- your faith will be tested. 
and you think you're a long time, you're not, will you endure or not? Do, those who endure to the end shall be saved, correct? Now listen to this. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? Is there no bread? Ne there is no bread. Neither is there any water. And our souls loathe, loathe, hates this light bread. That was the bread of manna. That is communion bread. That is the word of God. That is communion. And we say, what good does that do us? It doesn't fill our belly. And they're mad because they're not watered like everybody else did. They had to wait for God, Christ to give them the water and, and to bark out the well. They didn't sing up, bring up a well. They were so excited. And they, when they hate it, and it says here, and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Now, let's take a look at that. And the Lord sent serpents to the children of Israel, and they bit them, they died. Now, let's see. Therefore, they came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray to the Lord that he take the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the people said to Moses, Take thee, and, and the Lord said to Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it on a pole, and it shall come to rest that everyone that's bitten that looks upon it shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and he put it on the pole, and it came to pass, as if the serpent had bit any man, he beheld the serpent, and he watched it, and cast his eyes on it, he lived. Now, what I'm saying, he says, the Lord sent uh, fiery serpents. Well, the, the, it also says in Deuteronomy, the day before I put before you blessing and curses, life and death, now choose life. They chose, and then God uh, said God sent, but they chose, they chose the way of the devil of not waiting on God. Did they not? They're the one that complained to God. God didn't first send it to them. God was saying he, he had good plans for them, but they chose to believe the devil inside of their flesh to, to, to uh, believe that God had forsaken them and uh, abandoned them, correct? Well, if you choose something, you're going to get it. You know, God says uh, in, in Thessalonians, I believe it's uh, three, uh, it says, uh, I sent them a strong delusion they, they, that they might believe the lie because they did not love the truth. If you don't love the truth and you don't want to stay on the truth, God will send uh, uh, you a delusion because that's what you want. You want to believe a lie, you can believe a lie. If you want to believe the devil that, that your marriage may not make it, that you'll never get off drugs, that you, you, you'll always have that same temper, that sickness and disease will never uh, get go. Uh, God, I just call it quit God. I am, I'm judging God. He's not faithful to his word. Ah, ugh, let me out. Well, well, you're going to get fiery serpents. And you're not going to get into the promised land of healing, of deliverance, because you have given up. God says... Uh, those who endure to the end shall be saved. Did he not? So you ha it, it takes an endurance. Like the children of Israel, 38 years they quit. They almost were at the promised land. You understand. And only the young kids that decided not to go into belief didn't get in. Every rest of everybody else died. All the religion died. All the guys said, well, bye, bye, bye. They quit. But Moses, and, not Moses, but Caleb and Joshua got in. So you can get into your promised land. You can get in there, but you got to not quit. And if you think you're going to quit and you think God is mad at you, you want to judge God. I judge God. I, I, after a, I said seven years that I, I'm going to do things the way God wants them, and I'm not going to uh, dominate my wife. I'm not going to be the boss. I'm not going to tell her what to do. She's going to listen to me. I was going to wait on God to change her. And she fit my deal. I waited on God because I figured I knew how, how, how I wanted my life to be. Right. I waited on God. And then when about 10 years in the marriage, I said, uh, I, I'm tired of this. I, I can remember running down the road uh, saying, this is not working out. 
that my life is not the way I wanted it. That everything is not just private. I've done this long enough. I said, God, I shouted at, I'm, Lord, I'm tired of this crap. <laughs> I started judging God that he didn't keep his word and I did everything I was supposed to. Well, I was so goofed up anyway, guys, yeah, but I thought I was so righteous. I had done everything. And that's a lot of you too. You think you're righteous. You think you're something else. You think uh, your, uh, your poop don't stink. <laughs> well, you do. You know, because we are sons and God has those things have to get out of us. Now, uh, and later in life, I, I didn't realize I was judging God. I was mad at God. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people that well, life has not worked out the way you want it. You're still sick. You're still angry. Your marriage didn't work out. You, you're on drugs. You, you've asked God to deliver. You haven't been down. Yeah, you're, you're all these things here. And you've, you've been shaking your fist at God, just like the Israelis. God says, don't do it because you're opening up the door to the fiery serpent. Uh, God says, uh, I put a hedge around you, but if you, if, if, if you break the hedge down, the serpent can come in. He has legal rights. You have legal rights and God can't do anything about it because you have opened the door. You said, hey, I think I'm going to commit suicide. I feel like commit suicide. I'm depressed. It's hopeless. You've just given up on God. And you've taken the enemy bite because the devil is saying to you, hey, uh, here's how the devil works. He says to me, he says, man, I feel so depressed. And you think, I think I'm saying that. No, it's not me saying it. It's the devil saying it. And, and then he's trying to get me to say, come into agreement with him and say, yeah, I am depressed. As soon as I say I'm depressed, then the uh, demons of despair, hopelessness, and suicide come in. I just wish I ended my life. I wish I'm thinking about cutting myself. I'm I, I'm thinking about divorcing and everything. Uh, I I don't think I'll ever make it. I, I'm just going to divorce that guy, and, and I'll get a new wife, and, and or I'll get a a new husband. Uh, you know uh, that God's not faithful, and it seems so hopeless, and you've given up. Well, I'm telling you, you won't get in the promised land. Uh, talk about your healing. Okay, let's just talk about your healing. And I find a lot of stuff. You, some uh, healing comes right away. But if it doesn't come, you stay. It'll all come. You know, uh, do you think when you get to heaven, everybody's healed? <laughs> There's no sickness and needs in heaven. So you're healed anyway. So why not stay the course with God and get into the promised land? Because when you start giving up on healing... When I, 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 I believe my son, when he was three years old, he got cross-eyed. And uh, I told my wife I'd pray for him and God would heal him. Well, he didn't heal him. We had three operations. He never healed him at all. My son went through all life with cross-eyed. Well, I remember saying this and I judged God. I said, God is faithful in all his word, but some of his word he doesn't keep. I judge God. God, I repent of that. And I've repented it before too. I repent of judging you. Forgive me, God, for judging you. And if you, maybe you ought to say that right now. If you've been mad at God and judging him not faithfully and keep his word, say, God, forgive me. I Forgive me right now. Whoa. You bet got, people got relief on that one. I guarantee you that demon was flying out. So what we're doing is, is we're going over these promises and realizing don't get weary uh, because it says in Galatians 5, he says, do not get weary of doing good because in due season you will reap if you do not faint. A lot of you guys are thinking about fainting. Quit that right now. Quit being religious. Uh, quit, uh, stop uh, believing all the promises of God. You just stop believing. You're just going there and waiting to go to heaven. You're not going out telling anybody about souls. You're not going out there laying your hands on the sick and getting them healed because, because you have given up on the promises of God. Well, stop that. Now, get back because uh, uh, the God says uh, today is the promise and, and, and it hasn't passed by. Enter into it and you will, uh, will stir yourself up again. Release the fire, fire, fire of the Holy Ghost upon your life upon your, uh, upon your uh, future. L let God run into your life. Don't, uh, don't let anger and bitterness take you over. Now today, I'm going to cut this off early. I'm going to give the guys more time to speak and, and talk to you about things. So, hey, I love you guys. I love you champions. I, I want you guys to be blessed. 
And today, don't give up. Go out and have communion. Remember, communion, don't, uh, don't start thinking that's light bread. Don't believe the word of God doesn't do you any good. Read your word. Read your word. Promise your God. Don't give up your healing. Don't give up your deliverance. Don't give up. A good man never, ever quits. He gets up seven times. <laughs> so I, I release the fire, fire, fire of God in you champions. God bless. Bye-bye.